Let's now talk about secondary amenorrhea. You've had a period once, but now it's gone. That's secondary amenorrhea, as opposed to primary amenorrhea, which means you never had a menstrual cycle. Secondary amenorrhea is defined as no period for three cycle lengths or for three to six months. That's atypical. Something has gone wrong, and now it's our job to find out what. Let's now list the common causes of secondary amenorrhea. When you have a low or normal FSH, it can be due to weight loss. So if you've lost weight in a very quick time, your FSH might be quite low. If you have an eating disorder such as anorexia or perhaps bulimia, your FSH is low. You can have nonspecific hypothalamic amenorrhea. For some reason, your hypothalamus just stops firing and your anterior pituitary does not release gonadotropins. A very common cause is chronic anovulation, including PCOS. For more information about PCOS, there is a lecture about that. You can have it with hypothyroidism, so that's when your thyroid is not functioning as it should be. You can also see a normal or low FSH with Cushing syndrome. A pituitary tumor or an empty cella or Sheehan syndrome can also cause a low or normal FSH. Let's talk a little bit about Sheehan syndrome. Sheehan syndrome is often tested on the USMLE. It usually occurs after a postpartum hemorrhage. Postpartum hemorrhage still occurs worldwide and is the number one cause of maternal death. In the U.S., it's less so. But with Sheehan syndrome, you get pituitary apoplexy because the pituitary loses blood flow during a postpartum hemorrhage. These women typically cannot lactate postpartum, and they also lose their axillary hair, and they never have a return to menses. So watch out for this on your exam. Let's now talk about high FSH as a cause of secondary amenorrhea. This can occur with 46XX individuals who have primary ovarian sufficiency, or you can have an abnormal karyotype that leads to early cessation of menstrual cycles. This is the case with Turner syndrome patients. The majority of cases with Turner syndrome presents with primary amenorrhea. Secondary amenorrhea appears in less than 10% of patients, usually in those who carry a partial deletion of the X chromosome or have sex chromosome mosaicism. You can also have a high prolactin that causes secondary amenorrhea. There is another lecture set that you can download to learn more information. There are also anatomic causes of secondary amenorrhea. This is the case in Asherman syndrome. You typically see Asherman syndrome after a pregnancy where some type of dilation and curettage has occurred. This can occur as a result of a postpartum hemorrhage or post-abortal. These adhesions be cause the uterus to actually have adhesions between the two walls and can obstruct any menstrual flow. You can also find secondary amenorrhea in hyperandrogenic states. This happens with an ovarian tumor, non-classical congenital adrenal hyperplasia, and also undiagnosed hyperandrogenism. There are a lot more causes, but we're going to review just the large ones here. Functional hypothalamic amenorrhea is actually the most common cause of secondary amenorrhea. You can also have hyperandrogenism and polycystic ovarian syndrome. Hyperprolactinemia is third. Premature menopause or ovarian insufficiency comes in fourth. Asherman syndrome is last. And then you can have other uncommon causes of secondary amenorrhea. But I wouldn't worry so much about those in your USMLE. Try to remember the above. Now we'll go over what we should do when a patient presents with secondary amenorrhea. First, you need to complete a thorough history and physical examination. Second, don't forget to rule out pregnancy, as this is a common cause in the reproductive age. Third, we need to get an FSH, usually in conjunction with an estradiol, on the third day of the menstrual cycle, and a prolactin. A prolactin needs to be taken in the AM and fasting. If the FSH is actually equivalent or not high or not low, you should suspect an anatomic defect, such as malarian, agenesis, or dysgenesis. If the prolactin is high, you should do a radiographic evaluation for prolactinoma, unless there is an obvious cause as to why the prolactin is high. Again, there is another lecture that you can listen to that talks about prolactin. 
If the FSH is elevated, this can indicate ovarian failure or ovarian insufficiency. This is seen in gonadal dysgenesis. If the FSH is low or equivocal, this can mean chronic anovulation, as you see with PCOS and functional hypothalamic amenorrhea.